Hi, this is Rafael Casas, and I'm presenting to you Evolving by Bind Text Typeface Design Principles. By Bind's a uh, representative script of the Philippines. Although this one's primarily associated with the Tagalogs, this script has been used by other ethnic groups in the Philippines like the Ilocanos, the Visayans, and the Bicolanos. Some of its better known relatives are the Pallava script, the Kawi script, which is also a marker of our history, and the Sumatra Sulawesi scripts in which the Buginese and Old Makassar scripts are members of this family. The first Philippine script specimen is the Kalatagan Pot Inscription. According to research, these have shown to be something like a prayer pot meant to be read by a shaman. The second specimen here shows Don Dionisio Capulong's signature for land deed. The third specimen shows a first printout of Baybayin, dated 1593. So in here, you see that there's a bit of a different order as compared to what you see right now. The fourth specimen here shows a Ra specimen. This one is specifically from Zambales. The fifth one shows a new innovation for by Bind script, which is the Cruz Kudlit. This one was released in 1621. By Bind has a lot of theories of origin. A lot of them are quite disputed due to scarcity of evidence and also because the materials written are not exactly permanent so we get to have a lot of gaps when it comes to history but so far what I've posted in here are the more acceptable theories here one of the first ones is out of Kawi then another would be out of Sumatra and Sulawesi. Later, you will get to see the evidence of the relatedness. In here, this map shows the diagram on how the script might have traveled from India to the Philippines. So first, it came from South India to Java, Askawi, and Palava. Next, it may have evolved to Sumatra and Sulawesi. Then from Sulawesi, it went to Sulu, then to Manila. Then from Manila, it went to Visayas. This one was recorded by a friar named Father Alcina. So in here, we have the timeline from 1465 to today. So let's start with the signature or handwriting in Bai Bayin. This was the time when the script was still widely used. In this specimen of Doctrina Christiana, the basic characters are highlighted in red. We also have here the Ra 
and we also have here the cruise good links where my cursor is at the script has evolved to a lot of places in the philippines like in palawan where we have tagbanwa this script is the most similar in form to Baybay. So they have parallels in other Southeast Asian countries in Indonesia where Javanese and Balinese have that same similarity. And we also have Thai and Lao. Then we have here Buhid and Hanunoo. The forms here became angular due to, due to the constraints of the bamboo and the blades. And they also develop ligatures with dependent vowels. We also have here Kulitan, which is a derived Kapampangan script. Unlike most scripts in the Philippines, it has a subscript, consonant set, and a vowel lengthener. The script looked like it had a bright future, but unfortunately, due to social mobility, the locals decided to learn Latin script instead of their own. Another reason for the decline was due to the debate on the innovations that were placed in there. All hope is not lost, since there are a few other people who took a decision to publish a magazine in Baybayin script, like Panitik Silangan. Then in 1994, the script went to the phototype setting world. And this one's also the first attempt to separate Da and Ra. And then there are some other style explorations here, like what Norman de los Santos, also known as Nordenx, did. Then here's another counterfactual design exercise where by bind was used instead of Latin script. This one makes for a rather fun design exercise and it's also a visionary one if you, if you get to check the opinions of other designers. And we have here Noto Sans Tagalog by Frederick Brennan. In here we have the first order where we have the vowels and then we have the old order in here where my cursor is at and on the right hand side we have the Brahmic order in this slide we have here the Indonesian and Philippine scripts What the designer did here, Bayou, was that he excuse me. What he did in here was that he designed related scripts together so that uh, it would represent unity in Indonesia. But a lot of Philippine scripts happened to have some design principles and elements that sort of fit with the Indonesian scripts. In this section, we're going to talk about style classification. This is just one of the many ways to make Baybayin relevant today. 
So we have here DSS classification. Nordenx classification. This is actually one of the first attempts to bring by bind to the digital era. There are many other ways to classify it aside from what they've shown because one of the criticisms that their work could have is that they're closely based with Vox a type of classification system. This year, A type has withdrawn their endorsement for this system because it was a it was a flawed system, and a lot of forms ended up conforming to the Latin ones, even the foreign types. Now, we're showing you some alternatives. The first would be the, the additive models and the subtractive models. Now, for the additive model, we have here Nord size stroke of the pen theory. So there are two main ways to do it, by translation or by expansion. In the translation tool, it requires a flat or oval tip allowing thicknesses to change within the certain angles generated by lateral hand movement of the tool. So with this, you have here Certo Antioch Bible, Adobe Arabic, then Brioso in Latin, Lazurski in Cyrillic, Khmer and Surin for Khmer and Chuli for Thai. For the expansion set, we have here Dido, HT Elias, and Heisei Mincho Thai. So it needs a noodler span or a flexible pointed pen here or a brush. For the subtractive model, the negative forms get to be more focused in here, just as what this process shows here. We have here Willeman's theory in covering whites. So do not apply black but cover up whites so as to activate the light on the sheet of the paper. So you get to see a world of difference between Frutiger and Myriad Pro. Then Fred Smyers would focus on the counters here. He simply says, draw the counter forms first. In the Hiwa, the Ethiopian tends to focus on the white spaces, so it gets to give a certain kind of readability. Notan also shows how your form would maintain a certain kind of integrity right after you play around with it. These negative space theories are often done on the later phases of typeface design. So we have here Galliard, Quadrat, Tegaro, and Icom. In here, there's a mini theory of design principles for Southeast Asian index scripts. So the graphical types tend to be in either circular type, just like this non-Burmishian script sample is in here, 
we have the angular type like the Sundanese and Hanunoo. And then we have the noodle type scripts in which a lot of Southeast Asian scripts tend to be representative like Thai, Lao, Khmer, Balinese, Javanese, Baibayin, and Tagbanua. So for Latin typeface designers, if you get to design Cyrillic and Greek, you actually have a starting point for Noodle and Angular type Southeast Asian scripts. All you need to do is to learn how to respect the ductus of the local scripts. So in here, there are certain ways to iterate. In this presentation, I simply explored how the 1621 by Bain was made. The inference I was able to have was that they use a certain stylus and palm leaf first before imitating the forms and carving this to, to the printing press negatives. In this exercise, what I was able to find was that the horizontals are thicker and the elements are curvilinear. And these ducti match. So given this, I experimented with uh, another translation tool. What I did in here was that I used the Lontara and Bamboo form. Then I did some modifications on the third set here. And on the second set, what I attempted to do is to, to make the forms a little more edgy. The same goes in here. And then we also have here ways on how to express certain independent vowels, dependent vowels, and the viramas. There are actually three options. The cruz kudlit, the ekis, and the pamudput. So what I found in the experiment was that thick horizontals are recommended, but there are actually ex exceptions to the rule. You have the ka, ha, and the top bar of e independent vowel. In there, you actually can use the Latin contrast or simply follow the 60 to 80 degree contrast. So based on what we've explored in these forms, we came to a similar conclusion that by bind can be modular, modularized into entry strokes, wave strokes, flow strokes, cloud strokes, river strokes, and fall strokes. So this is what happened after, after the experiment. In here, I matched here the italic and the baibayin forms. This one was an entry for Damakolahiko. So if you want to properly encode Philippine scripts for by buy-in, you need to use U plus 1700 plus U171F. Now, for Unicode 14, there are three more glyphs added. 170D, which is the Ra, 
1715 which is the pamudpud and 171F which is the archaic ra for tagbanwa they have their own forms same with buhid hanunoo and for now the kulitan still hanging because for now it's still a proposal so where do we go from here or how do we modernize without losing its genius loci for lack of a better word so under the philippine law the national writing and system act of 2014 defines by buying as all existing and discovered ancient and traditional scripts of the Philippine indigenous people. However, I usually prefer Suyat due to its inclusivity. So for now, by buying is used in paper bills, passports, and some government insignia. So given all of these details, it's still a work in progress and given some rules and exceptions, all I can say is that apply your design elements judiciously. You can actually try to attempt Latin, Greek, Khmer, and Thai elements as long as you know how to harmonize them, which for now is quite a tough job. If you'd like to continue this, feel free to refer to this presentation and make an inspiration out of this or be inspired by this or even criticize my work. Thank you so much for your time and now, now we're open for question and answer.